Hola, bienvenidos una vez más a Planeta Proyecto. En el vídeo de hoy tengo el placer de entrevistar a Elizabeth Harding. Ella cuenta con más de 10 años de experiencia en la dirección de programas y proyectos del sector médico y financiero. Además, es directora de la consultora Autobos y es muy, muy conocida por ser bloguera. Su blog A Girl's Guide to PM ha obtenido multitud de premios y por último tiene hasta 5 libros publicados sobre dirección de proyectos. Sin más, comenzamos. Hello, uh, Elizabeth. Thank you very much for accepting this interview. Uh, I'm one of the many followers that you've got uh, on the internet. Oh, well, thank you very much for <laughs> inviting me to come on to your, your video channel, your YouTube channel. Um, okay, great. It's really great to have the opportunity to talk to you. Okay, it's a real pleasure, being honest. Um, well, this is a must uh, question, Elizabeth. Uh, back in 2006, why did you decide to, uh, to create a blog? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, for two reasons, if I'm honest. One, because I was writing a book and I had read about the fact that it was important for authors to have somewhere that they could share ideas about their books. So I thought, oh, that sounds like it could be good marketing. So I started a blog partly for that, to, to spread the word about my first book as it, before it came out. But also, you know, when I started to think about what would be the point of a blog beyond that, I thought there was an opportunity for me to write about what it means to be a woman in project management because at the time, most of the people on stage at conferences were men. Most of the articles written in the project management magazines were men. And I felt that that didn't reflect my experience. Yeah. I worked in a department where it was 50-50. 50% women doing project management, 50% men. I'd always been in a very equal environment and I didn't think that the world, the, the, the public got yeah. to see <laughs> that, that there were women working in project management. I uh, know, I uh, know, I see that. Uh, for those who, uh, who intend, uh, Elizabeth, to create a blog, uh, let's say, could you recommend any tip to become a long-term blogger? I think you really have to want to do it because it can be quite difficult to keep the momentum, to have to write articles all the time. And um, I think a lot of people start and then give up because they don't really enjoy writing. So I have always enjoyed writing. Ever since I was a little girl, I've written stories and poems and a diary. So for me, blogging was just felt normal because I write books, I write, you know, I enjoyed writing essays for university. So if you can find a topic that interests you and you are motivated enough to write about it or to do videos like you or to do a podcast, okay. but cool. being able to commit to something because it's fun I think will really help you blog over the longer term. <laughs> yes, and uh, I think that people don't know <clears throat> the, the hard work that uh, it is behind the steam. You know? Oh, absolutely. It's yes, not, uh, and I've started to write about writing. that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've started to write about what it takes to be a good blogger. I'm setting up um, a different website about that. Yes. Uh, but yes, it, it is a lot of hard work which you know from doing these, these video interviews. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and for, um, you know, uh, should they, uh, should they uh, be afraid, let's say, of being exposed to, to other, to the opinions uh, of others? No. I think, as a whole, the project management community is very supportive, very interested to hear lots of different views, and there is lots of space for more opinions. So don't worry about the fact that you might be saying something that somebody else might have said already because nobody has said it the way that you have said it. And I think 
I found that when I've had real difficulties, um, mm -hmm. I accidentally deleted my blog, for example. That was not a good day. <laughs> and, um, but the blogging community is very friendly. The project management community is very supportive. So I don't think people should be worried. That shouldn't be the reason that you don't do something. Okay. Fear is never a good reason to not do something. Yeah, of course. Like uh, and, and the next question, um, Elizabeth, uh, let's say the headline, I, I really like this question because the headline of your blog says, get projects done with more confidence and less stress. So what's the formula? <laughs> oh, I wish I knew. <laughs> Come on, enlighten I us. <laughs> you know. yes. I don't think... If there was a very simple formula, I would tell you, and we would all be very happy. <laughs> Don't keep <laughs> I it think, with you. <laughs> I think it's a mixture of things. It's yeah. knowing the culture of your team. It's knowing your organization. Um, and then on top of that, there are some simple tools and techniques that I think work well, that you can use in any situation. But really, it's also about having confidence in your ability and believing that you can do the job, that's a big part of feeling like you can do your job with less stress. Okay, yes. And after that, it's really about relationships. Your yeah. networks at work, the, the professional development that you do, working with your teams, stakeholder engagement. Yeah. I haven't managed to boil it down to a very simple success formula. I think I'd make a lot of money if I could. <laughs> because then we'd all do it yeah, and everyone absolutely. would have 100% success all the yeah, time. Absolutely. And I would add um, just the, the knowledge because we need to study as a professional. Yes. Because we are, uh, you know, this is uh, being a project manager. Uh, it's needed to, uh, or we need to study a lot. I about. agree. I think there are lots of, new things that we can learn and even someone who like me who's been doing the job 10 15 years that there is always something new that somebody else has done that i can benefit from okay. so sharing experience is really important that is yes yes keeping updated huh? yes But, um, let me show a couple of videos uh, okay Okay. Millions of Spanish women stayed off the job on Thursday in the first ever women's strike in Spain. They're fighting against wage inequality. Men are typically paid more than women for the same kind of work. They're fighting against domestic violence. More than 100 women. Five million people across Spain took part in a feminist strike in March, aiming to highlight sexual discrimination, domestic violence, and the wage gap. Now, women are to hold many of the top posts in government. Nadia Calvino, the chief of budget at the European Commission, has been sworn in as economy minister. And Dolores... De okay, so this is happening not only in Spain, but also all around the world, okay? Since you started to work as a project manager, uh, how things have changed in project management in terms of uh, gender equality? I'm not sure that they have, <laughs> oh. particularly. Um, not in terms of major improvements hmm. and I've got I don't know if you've seen this but the UK does the this company in the UK does a report every year into how many into lots of things about project management and the industry in the UK but they also ask are you a man or a woman so they can look at the percentage of women working in project management Hmm. And this is on my desk because I went to a conference last week where I got given it. And so it says, in 2015, there were 29% women in the industry. And in 2017, when the last survey was done, it was 27%. So it's actually worse now in terms of representation than it was a couple of years ago. Hmm. And that's only a small survey. But if you think 30% or less there is not, it's not 50-50 in, in the UK for the split between men and women working in project management. Perhaps that's because there's a lot of construction, engineering, civil engineering projects happening here at the moment. But I think that's been the split for, for some time now. Oh. So 
what I have noticed, there is some good news. Oh. There's more visibility for things like women in, there's a special interest group called Women in Project Management, which is, I can only talk about the UK really. Mm -hmm. um, the Association for Project Management here has a number of different special groups and the Women in Project Management group is celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. When I started working in project management, I didn't know that existed. I didn't even know there was a group. And I joined the British Computer Society's women's group because that was all I thought there was. But now the Women in Project Management group is huge. It's, it, the conference has won prizes. It's one of the flagship events in the UK project management calendar every year. It attracts lots of women. It attracts high profile sponsors and companies who come to advertise at the event. It's, you know, it's worth going to. They get great speakers. And that visibility has risen hugely yeah. in the last five years, I would say. Yeah. And there is more balance at events. So this conference that I went to last week, there was a good mix of men and women giving the presentations. And it wasn't like that 15 years ago. Yeah, so uh, things are changing, not uh, very fast, but I think that uh, step by step, okay? Yes. But being honest, uh, I belong to construction industry and uh, I have never seen a, uh, a woman project manager. Well, I uh, have met some who are working on um, the construction of our sort of uh, tube system. And railways. Yeah. So I have, I have met some. So they do exist, but perhaps they're not that common, are they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's, let's continue with the, with the interview, uh, Elizabeth. Mm, and, and just finally with this topic, as an internet influencer, uh, what would you say to Spanish speakers, uh, women that are starting their career uh, as, a, as a project manager? Oh, it's a great career. It really is. It's so varied, so interesting. You get to meet such wonderful people and work in a team. You can shape your career into any direction. So if you're interested in managing risk, there is a place for you. If you're interested in scheduling, there's a place for you. Any industry, any level of experience, you can be really junior as a project coordinator or an administrator in the project management office through to being projects director, board level, head of portfolio at an international organization. So there is huge scope to build a career that really fits around you. Okay. And for women specifically, it's very flexible. I work from home. This is my office at home um, a couple of days a week and I only work part time. So I'm able to balance my career around my family, family. which is very yeah. important for, for parents, men and women. Yeah. Not every industry or every employer is going to give you those opportunities. So I think once you have made the decision that project management is for you, it's also about finding an employer which, who supports you and your career and is a good fit for where you want your career to go but there are very supportive employers out there who offer flexible working who offer part-time hours it's just a case if, if that's what you want you just have to look around and ask great great um, more than ever uh, i think that is necessary to build bridges between people uh, between project managers uh, from uh, different countries. Uh, so in this context, how important is uh, technology and uh, collaboration tools uh, for project managers? I think tools these days are really important. Having the right technology can make it so much easier to do your job because you can share information in real time and everybody can update the same plan. That can really help when you've got remote workers, people who work from home like me, or people who are out at a construction site, perhaps like you, and you're all looking at the same information all the time. 
I think tools can also help with making information available more quickly. So when I started, mm -hmm. I would produce a monthly report and that would be it. Um, if my sponsor wanted more information, he'd have to wait till the next report. Yeah. But now, of course, that's not acceptable. Everybody mm. wants information straight away. And having a collaboration tool that shows you a dashboard or that gives you a real-time information about your plan or resource assignments, that's, that's really helpful for managing expectations with your management community. Mm. Right, yeah. And, and talking about technology, uh, everybody knows that tech technology is changing the world faster than ever. So yes. are, are we project manager, uh, uh, are we ready to this significant uh, change? And in addition, uh, do we play a key role in this technological, let's say, revolution? I think we definitely play a key role if we want it. It's a really interesting question because I think it's, I see a lot of cultural differences in how project managers do their jobs. So I run a Facebook group and in the Facebook group, which is Project Management Cafe, anyone who's watching is welcome to come and join yeah. us. <laughs> But we talk about different types of project management challenge. And what I notice is that whenever I talk about benefits management or value or leadership, there's nearly always somebody who will say that is not the job of the project manager. So I think there is a big cultural difference between what different countries think the role of the project manager is. Yeah. And I think if we get involved in understanding big data, understanding um, artificial intelligence and what it means for us on our projects, asking the right questions, asking to use the tools, knowing what difference data could make. I'm thinking about things like if you are trying to do estimating on your project and you have a, lots and lots of data, advanced technology, you could look at all of the estimates from past projects and calculate who is going to give you an accurate estimate and who has made mistakes on their estimates for the last five projects. Yeah. And then your software could say to you, Elizabeth says she will take five days, but she has always been wrong and she always takes 20% longer. Do you yeah. want to accept her yeah. estimate? And you would say, no, I increased the estimate by 20%. Mm. So if we can understand that and we can ask those questions, we could be so much more useful to our organizations. Yeah. And I think where project managers see themselves as somebody who just delivers What it says in the project charter, they've been told to do these tasks and they just do the tasks and they do them very well. But people who can do the role and question, be a real leader, make sure that they're doing the right tasks, not just what they've been told to do. I yeah. think there's a great deal more value that we could add. And yeah. I think that's, that opportunity is there. Anyone can have those intelligent conversations. You don't yeah. have to have any special permission from your manager yeah. Yeah. to double check that what your project is doing is in line with the strategic objectives of the company. Yeah, of course. Always the role of the leader. Eh? Always yes. It is above, uh, above us all the time long. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, Elizabeth, we are about to finish the, our interview. So okay. I'm going to give to you some options, okay? And you have to choose uh, one of them, okay? I need a quick answer. So uh, this is important, okay? Just say the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn? Facebook. Digital book or paper book? Paper book. Arsenal or Tottenham? <laughs> You're asking me this question during the World Cup. Um, I used to live near Tottenham, so I would have to say Tottenham, but I don't really follow football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is the last one, okay? So this is my favorite one. 
So think a little bit, what are you going to say, okay? Fish and chips or Spanish paella? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Fish and chips. <laughs> Thank but you. What do you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With peace. Yes. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me on the video today. It's been really fun. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.